My next guest is the newest member of the UFC roster. He's going to be making his debut next week at UFC 213. He's going to be taking on Terry and Ware. Cody Stamen joins me here on the program. Cody, how the heck are you? Hey, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing a lot better since I got that phone call Wednesday. Let's yes. Yes, absolutely, man. And right off the bat, congratulations, Cody. This is a long time coming. Uh, you, you know, you know. I know you've been chomping at the bit for a while. Uh, it's finally come together. Just take me through that moment when you find out the contract sign. You're officially a member of the UFC roster. Right. So you and I have been doing interviews for you know over a year now, and I feel like every single fight, it was like the next fight. Yeah. The, you think it's going to be limited in the UFC? You think it's going to be limited in the UFC? And I'm like, yeah, I, I do. I think I've done enough. Um, so I can't say that I was surprised that I got the call. I knew that, you know, I was definitely one of the top prospects in the U S and it was just a matter of time before an opening came up. Um, phone call Wednesday, uh, you know, Hey, can you fight? Would you be ready? Yeah, of course. And then, you know, kind of, you're just itching at the bit and then you finally get that actual phone call where it's like, dude, you're in, you're in the UFC. Like, Here's, a, here's 90 pages of paperwork to fill out, and everything happens like that. Um, you know, it was a pretty emotional thing. I was with my dad and brother, and, like, I got it. I'm, like, sitting there on the phone, like, oh, my God. This heck. I mean, I always knew it would, but, you know, when it actually did happen, it was pretty uh, – it was, it was a really, really cool thing. That's awesome that your family was there when it all went down. That's uh, that, that's I, I I love hearing stuff like that. That's really cool. Um, I should I should mention to my audience right now. It's June thirtieth. We're recording this at about nine thirty three Eastern time. Uh, the news isn't public yet, so I, I mean we, we can't really spill the beans out anywhere. Ha, has it been tough, you know, knowing since Wednesday and not being able to tell anyone just because you don't want to, you know, UFC is kind of weird that weird about that stuff. Yeah, 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 it is. It is really tough. You know what I mean? Because there are people that you absolutely have to tell. Um, you know, like people that are going to be in your corner. Uh, obviously, you know, m- my family knows, uh, there are a lot of people in my close circle that know, but, uh, you know, I'm, I've pretty much given everyone like a, the social media, you know, blackout, like absolutely do not put anything on social media. If you, you give me a lot of trouble, you could ruin this. Like it kind of made it seem like, I know it probably wouldn't happen, but I mean, it seemed like it was like life, life or death. They did. So, right. I no, was, uh, better be safe than sorry. Right. I mean, it's, you know, it's just one of those things that I guess, um, how much of this d- d- sort of goes into, into KOP and, you know, Matt Frendo and, you know, putting you on those cards and kind of, you know, really uh, putting the focus on you. I think a lot of fighters, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll go and fight for promotions and they get sort of buried in the undercard, but you've been the star for KOP. How much do you think that's helped you get this contract? Yeah, Matt Friendle and Josh Miller, those guys have taken really good care of me at KOP. You know, we have really, we had a really, really good relationship the whole time I was fighting there. Uh, you know, they were bringing tough guys uh, in from out of town. I was pulling my weight and selling tickets. Uh, so it was a really, really mutually relationship. And, you know, yeah, they, they did have a big hand in getting me here because I was fighting tough guys at home. You know what I mean? Like, there were a lot of things stacked up. You know, I mean, I could literally sit here for the next 15 minutes and list off, you know, 150 people that have helped me get here you know this definitely doesn't happen alone you got to align yourself with a lot of really good people and make a lot of really good business choices and relationships and and that's that's really how it happened Uh, i've had a million people you know helping me to get where i am and uh this is a featherweight fight and it's my understanding because i talked to tarian earlier uh the reason it's featherweight is just because of the whole that you saw it i think they're worried about the weight cut and all that is is that the reason this fight's because you guys are both uh bantamweight fighters you're right 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 yeah, and then you know that being like a nine day, nine day, uh, nine day notice, they were just like, you know, better safe than sorry. You don't really want two guys coming in, you know, depleted, and not performing. I think it was just better for both of us, because um, let's be honest, I don't think there's a handful of guys that walk around at their fight weight, um, but most guys cut a lot of weight, you know, at this level. So you know, it's definitely going to be beneficial for him and I. Yeah, for sure. And, and I know the plan is to go back down to bantamweight, assuming there's a spot on the roster for you. Because uh, I, I know you fought at both, but uh, ideally bantamweight's your, your weight class, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, definitely go back to bantamweight. Now, uh, another thing I asked Tarion was, you know, if he was familiar with you, and he said yes, because he has a story about how he wrapped your brother's uh, hands during a fight one time. Do you remember the story at all? No. Okay, interesting. I guess uh, we'll watch my interview after you're done this. But, uh, yeah, he, talk, he talks about the story. He says you probably, you probably wouldn't have remembered him. But uh, now, now that you are fighting him, you guys have the same management and everything. Um, how do you feel like you match up against him? Uh, you know, I feel like he's a, he's a really similar matchup to a lot of other guys that I've fought. Um, you know, obviously, you know, guys that are familiar uh, are really good. You know, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. He's very tough. Uh, there's a reason he's uh, in the position just like I am. 
Um, but I really do think that I have the upper hand in, as far as, you know, athletic ability and skill. Uh, I think that I'm, I'm more well-rounded than he is. I think he's a real good boxer, but I think I'm a real good boxer, kickboxer, wrestler, and I think that's where, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to beat him because I can fight in so many different places to where I think he's pretty limited. Uh, it's just boxing. For sure. Um, let's talk about your training camp, Michigan top team. Uh, one of the, the big benefits I would imagine for you is a lot of your teammates just fought, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. So I'm sure you've already sort of been in, in the trenches as far as training camp. Um, has training camp gone, uh, you know, sort of a okay as far as, uh, you know, everything. Yeah. I mean, everything's been great. You know, I'm always in the gym, always working. So, you know, I, I've been, I've been thinking that this is going to happen for a long time. So there's a little added, you know, uh, motivation to stay in shape and to, to be working hard. So, you know, when I got the call, I was real excited, and it was a you know opportune time. I think that you know all the things we can put in my life at the exact time that I was ready for them, and, and uh, it's going to be a good night, Saturday night. And how how nice is it uh, cutting to forty five instead of thirty five? I imagine uh, you know the weight cut's not going to be too bad for you. Yeah, no, it, no, the weight cut will be easy. Um, yeah, that was that was huge uh, when when Jason House told me that it was at forty five. I like got on my knees and prayed to God and thanked him because that cut to thirty five is tough, even when I'm you know. Uh, planning to make 35, but you know, on nine days notice, it was going to be uh, going to be brutal. So yeah, I'm pretty fortunate that's at that 145. And and just sticking with training camp, uh, who are some of your, your main guys? You know, Darren Cruikshank, guys like that, that sort of uh, you know main bodies helping you get ready for this fight. Yeah, yeah, you know, always always Darren. You know, Darren's always always been one of my main training partners just because you know he's he's uh, he's a killer on his feet. He's a hard guy. To, he's a hard guy to go with. No matter who you are, you know, he keeps you honest. Uh, you know, so that's that's always uh, you know one of my main guys, uh, one of the amateurs, Muneeb uh, Salmani. He's another guy that I work with a lot. Uh, you know, my boxing coach, Kerry Rowe. This has been it's been more like um, technique, technique, conditioning type stuff, just because uh, you don't want to risk an injury. So I've been uh, I've been training a lot smarter lately, which uh, is gonna gonna play off. And on that same note, who's gonna be in your corner for this fight? Darren Cruikshank, obviously, but uh, who who's the other person? So Darren and then uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Devin King, will, will be coming out. and Maybe another teammate, too, but, you know, possibly. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. If all this stuff happens so fast, you know, it's like I'm still in the, like, the, like I, you know, I did, did all my medicals this morning. I filled out 100 pages worth of paperwork. Like, it all happened. I mean, today, it's insane. I mean, this is crazy. It's, it's hot off the press, as they say. Um, July 8th, uh, what's your prediction? How do you see this fight sort of unfolding with you and Terry and where? You know, it's either gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fast knockout, or we're gonna ha- we're gonna have a we're gonna have a long, drawn out war, and it's gonna go to decision. And I know at the end of the night, I'm gonna get my hand raised, and uh, you know you'll be seeing me again. Hopefully, uh, UFC when UFC comes to Detroit in December. That, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, that's sort of the ideal situation. You go out there, you get the finish, and then they save you for that that Detroit card because they have a lot. I forgot how many fighters are actually from Michigan that are in the UFC, like uh, you know Kevin Lee and Amanda Bobby Cooper. Like, there's a lot of Michigan fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I think there's. I think it's my, me, Kevin, Jared Brooks. Jeez, uh, who else? I mean, there's a lot of guys. Uh, Bob, from Bobby Michigan. Nash is from Michigan, is he not? Bobby Nash, of course. Bobby, yeah, Bobby. He's fighting here soon too. Jared and Bobby are both fighting like weeks after I am. So I mean, everybody's fighting like right next to each other. Everyone in Michigan. That's pretty cool. Excellent. Um, last question for you here. Uh, you know, on that plane ride to Vegas, uh, you know, I'm sure everything's you know pretty exciting. What would I find you doing on the plane? Are you a music guy? You you movie guy? What would I find you doing? Well, you know, normally I would say I'd be watching a movie, um, but or reading a book. Those are two things I always do on the planes. A lot of times, like, I'll, I'll get into, a, like, a good, you know, like a, a health book or something. I like to read a lot about, like, health and nutrition. Um, but this flight is at, like, 6 in the morning, so good chance I'm going to be sleeping the entire way. Wake up, and then I got to do uh, the rest of my medicals. And then, you know, it's just uh, drilling and chilling until, until I got to make the weight and beat somebody up. Excellent. I can't wait for this fight, man. UFC 213. It's coming up next Saturday, July 8th. Uh, Cody, congratulations again. Uh, this, again, I just, I'm ecstatic for you and for Tarion as well because I know how much uh, you guys have really been putting in the work on the regional scene. Uh, where can people get a hold of you on social media? And if you've got any uh, thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. So uh, this is Cody Stamen on all my stuff, my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, C-O-D-Y-S-T-A-M-A-N-N. Uh, you know, i got to thank everybody that's been, you know, truly been there for me. Uh, 
leading up to this. You know, thank you for uh, for interviewing me long before I was ever in the UFC. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you know all the stuff that adds up. That's what you know makes this happen. So uh, yeah, thanks to uh, all the people that made this happen.